Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover your throne. Hope you all will enjoy this video and subscribe for more content. The story starts with a view of a castle. Someone shouts congratulations, your highness. What a lovely couple you make. It was a day blessed even by the winds. The crowd was cheering. As story counting as we see the first heir to the throne of the Vasilius Empire. Eros Orna Vasilius, and the only daughter in the house of Count Callista, Psyche Callista. Today was the joyous day of their engagement. A girl in purple dress standing in front of crowd seems unhappy. She said to herself that it was as if they had completely forgotten. She was wearing a purple stone necklace and seems to be angry. She said that I was meant to be Thier Crown Princess. I've heard they'll be heading to a resort in the south. Two guys standing in crowd said, Didn't Lady Psyche lose the Crown Princess contest? His Highness must be quite partial to her. The other guy said, Well, he has no choice. The Solons were accused of attempting to assassinate a member of the Imperial family. He included about that. There are rumors that His Highness had falsely accused them so that he could be with Lady Psyche. Hey, watch it. That guy shouts why should I? His Highness has made it ethical that he is turning his back on the Solons. The House of Solon is done for now. With Lady Medea's temper, it won't be easy to find a new suitor. At least she still has her looks. Maybe I should propose. Someone interrupts saying H. Hey. It was Lady Medea. The other guy suddenly put his hand on the face of first guy and make him silent. Lady. Lady Medea. The eldest daughter in the house of Duke Solon, Medea Solon. A girl standing before her says my lady. There's no need to waste your time on lowly vermin such as these. The guy standing there seems to be uncomfortable. Medea glare at him. She turns back and say I'll remember you. Then we see a royal vehicle going somewhere. One of that guy says she just left. Without punishing us? The other guy said H.A. Ha ha. You see the Solons have had their day. Don't you realize that silence weighs heavier than a thousand words? Changing scenes we saw view of a city. Someone asking did you hear? A boy with a woman walkings on street ask what happened. The lady tells they found a corpse in the river. Apparently, the guy slipped and fell in. She included but what's strange is. The corpse had its tongue cut out. Changing scenes we saw Lady Medea lost in her thoughts. Walking with a boy she asked brother. How is mother doing? The boy replied she's a leaning. Then we see the door opens and they both enters the room where a man wearing glasses whipping his face with towel was staining before a man in royal dress holding hand of a lady asking to that man tell me the truth, doctor. I'll be fine. That man tells to him that the duchess has been rather sickly from birth, and it seems that her condition deteriorated during her imprisonment. He countenance by the end of this year, she may no longer. The other man shouts with anger what? and started throwing things in anger. The doctor says see come yourself, your grace. Father, ever since that girl appeared, everything has been a mess. Some servants around Lady Medea started giving her ideas one said shall we send someone over to the resort? Others said I heard they won't be accompanied by any guards, so she should be an easy target. The third one said we'll teach that wench a lesson. Lady Medea says it's fine. She's not to be taken care of like that old man. If Psyche is attacked now, his highness will come for my head first. She gripping her cloth says but still, my anger refuses to subside. Right now Psyche is. Psyche wearing a light blue dress holding her hat was staring at something was standing somewhere. What are you looking at? Come and have a look. Over here. Pointing towards a shop. She said I have many beautiful trinkets on display. I want to send a gift to Lady Medea. The boy standing before her asks after how she's harassed you. There's not an ounce of hatred in your heart. She replies I'm sure she's waiting for me to make amends. The shopkeeper holding a box said this one is popular among tourists. While she was sitting in front of him. 
The shopkeeper countenance it's been crafted using local minerals that cannot be found elsewhere. Doesn't its color remind you of the beautiful ocean? The boy started thinking something and said H.A. She asked him what is it? He replied, it's nothing. What a rare gift. He countenance saying choose that one. I too, A am curious to see how Lady Medea will react. While changing scenes we saw Lady Medea sitting on a chair staring at the gift which was placed on table in front of her. A servant appears and tells it was her lady's order that I see you open the gift. A lady servant standing behind Lady Medea shouts how dare she. Lady Medea said hush. It's nothing too difficult. She is the future crown princess. Who am I to disobey? But I'm worried. I may not be able to hide my disappointment should the gift not be satisfactory. The servant stands in front of him silently giving no expressions. Lady Medea picks the gift box and looks at it. Then she taps the box on the table and said, I see, that her lady has taken great care in choosing her gift this time. She said I'll send her a reply shortly. The servant bowed his head and replied I shall relay your message. The door closed and the lady servant says H is gone. Erm, my lady. Lady Medea picks a lamp and throw it in anger. The lady servant shouts please calm yourself. Lady Medea, your hand is bleeding. The box opens and we see a broken ring felt on ground. Lady Medea shouts how dare she, asterisk how dare you. After you cheated to become the crown princess, asterisk, how dare you send me this cheap trinket as a gift. You dare to mock me? Closing her hand, she said fine. We shall see who gets the last laugh. In the next scene we saw, the Count's manner. A woman named Nanny asked did you get enough rest? How are you feeling? Lady Psyche replied you worry too much, Nanny. My lady, the house of Solon has sent these flowers, Nanny said. A letter. Lady Psyche said and counted you reading letter, dear Lady Psyche. I send you these flowers and returns for your gift. Their scent is known to help with sleep. South place them at your bedside. Would you care to join me for tea soon? We have so much to catch up on after the crown princess competition. Lady Psyche shovers and say nothing. Nanny ask are you that happy my lady? A girl standing behind them said it's not like Lady Medea to send you such a letter. Lady Psyche with a happy face replied I'd like to believe that my sincerity has finally reached her. Invite her over as soon as possible. Lady Medea holding a bottle of a suspicious purple liquid, saying I have you now, Pisky. My apologies for such a hasty invitation Lady Medea, Lady Psyche said. She countenanced, I must be at the temple tomorrow. Lady Medea replied no need for apologies. I've brought some tea and sugar for us to share. A sugar cube falling in cup of a tea placed on the table making a sound, plop. A cube of sugar will make the tea taste richer, Lady Medea said. You are so knowledgeable, Lady Medea. Lady Saihi relied to her while tasting the tea. Lady Medea with a suspicious look asked, how is it? She replied, it's very fragrant. Lady Medea said, I'm glad you like it. The nanny while watching them having a conversation said, how could they converse so normally? The author maid replied I was so worried she might do something to Lady Psyche the nanny asked her to lower her voice. Lower your voice. Lady Medea said I see that you are dearly loved by your servants. I heard that you treat them like family, regardless of status. Lady Psyche replied thank you Lady Medea replied it wasn't a compliment. Must I bring myself to tell you that I can hear your maids speaking I love me? If you don't understand how they've wronged me, I shall slap them to teach them a lesson. Lady Medea, that's not necessary. Instead, let me apologize, Lady Psyche replied. My apologies for interrupting. Lady Psyche must go to the temple tomorrow, so I must ask you to leave now, Lady Medea. Lady Medea thought this must be him. Psyche's favorite knight. From the family of knights that has served the Callistas from the moment of their birth. The Callista's guard dogs would go as far as to disobey imperial orders to protect them. She placed the cup of tea on the table making a sound, clank, said neither do I wish to stay a moment longer, after being mistreated as such.
she leaves the place at the very next moment. The knight asked Nanny about Sky. Where is Lady Psyche? She replied I heard sobbing coming from her room for a while. Shall I take a look? The nanny opens the door a little bit and sneak inside. She saw the lady Psyche had fallen from her bed she said my, my lady. Watching the situation a lady servant said she was fine just a moment ago. What happened? While the male servant standing there said she's burning with fever. Quick, the doctor the knight interrupt and said no. We cannot call just any doctor. If rumor spreads that Lady Psyche has fallen ill, she will be replaced with Lady Medea at the temple tomorrow, on the yearly day of prayer. The knight wears a black dress and said I'll bring someone over myself. Please look after Lady Psyche. The knight shouts Medea. While riding horse and crossing the forest he said the contest is over already. Why would she do something like this? But it's strange. He continued I had checked the flowers for poison, and made sure that the teacup wasn't tampered with. They even shared tea from the same kettle. While saying this his horse's eyes turns red and horse stopped. He said WHOE. What's the matter, boy? We're almost there. Just a little further. His horse becomes uncontrollable and drop him down. Ugh. Jay's a gentle one. What could have spooked him? The horse leave him and then run away, he shouts. Come back! While he was falled on the ground Lady Medea in a white dress appears. She said you seem to have survived the fall, unfortunately. He with a surprised look asks how. Lady Medea, what are you doing here? She replied I knew you'd come. You served Psyche since you were just but a boy, did you not? He was completely scared and asked what. Are you talking while saying this Lady Medea stabbed her sword through his chest and said she will soon also experience the agony of losing everything? The story countenances with a view of moon surrounded by clouds. Lady Medea said the flower's fragrance is harmless on its own, but it becomes poisonous. When mixed with the drug I added to the sugar cubes that she countenances her words while holding a sword covered by blood, my, my, look at me talking to a corpse. While looking at night fallen on the ground, she said. Someone said, don't you think it was a bit too easy, my lady? I did take care of the others, but still. A boy appears wearing a royal dress and a red stone which was attached with his tie. He sighed, whoa, he didn't even have his sword on him, while checking night's body with his foot. He countenance, sparring with him must have been a piece of cake. Lady Medea replied, Enough of your nonsense, Heli. Have you made the preparations as I've asked? Heli replied, Most certainly, my lady. He asked Medea, Will Psyche die? She replied, I know. Sadly, she'll soon recover. Because I planned it that way. Meanwhile, Lady Psyche was eating steak. She cut it with a knife and eats a small piece with fork. Psyche's father sitting in front of her said, You need to eat more to recover, darling. Her mother standing next to her father said, I'm worried you might faint on your way to the temple. She replied, I'm sorry, father. Lady Medea wears a royal cap shawl and said I'll be back soon. After she leaves the servants start talking, when the nanny said, perhaps we shouldn't have told her about her night. She's so distraught. The other maid said, I'm grateful she's so considerate of mere servants like us. But the servant standing next to her shouts, we must show our gratitude. He asked if only someone could go keep watch over her. The maid raised her hand and said, I'll go. She said, I know of a path away from the town that cuts through the forest. She riding a horse said, I didn't need company. The redhead boy next to her riding his horse replied, It's dangerous. Do you really think that the knight got lost? He was born and bred right here in these lands. There's no way I'm buying that story. Something must have happened to him. Maybe he's already wait hold on look there. Someone's. A guy wearing a brown dress with white hairs was standing there. There was a golden blouch on his cloth seeing this the boy shouts. It's the knight's clothes. He shouts hey. Hey. The boy turns around and look at them. Changing scenes we saw a temple. A man wearing a white dress said this is the scared relic worn during our yearly prayer for peace. 
The future of the Vasilius Empire is now in your hands. Crowds standing there started cheering, Hooray! On the day of prayer, the temple will be kept empty and Psyche Callista alone will be able to enter. This is done to prevent the corruption of the holy grounds, a suspicious man wearing a black hood said. He holding a key in his hands counted his, so it'll be the end of my priesthood if anyone discovers that I gave you this key. Lady Medea standing in front of her replied, I know. That's why I'm letting it slide that you've dared to keep your face covered. She counted as I only trust you because Lord Helio recommended you. That priest started to open a door. The door opens and ladders appears that we're going downside. The priest said, at the end of these stairs is what you're looking for. She was standing there holding a light in her hand. Changing scenes again we saw the redhead boy coughing and covering his eye with his hand to stop blood coming from his eye. He said, it's over. This man. He had the looks of a sheltered nobleman. How wrong I was. The guy in brown dress was holding a sword covered by blood standing in front of the boy. The boy said, he's absurdly strong. Could it be that the night was? The boy suddenly hold the maid's foot and said, run and save yourself. Go call for help. In the meanwhile, I will the maid ignoring him runs towards the white hair guy. The boy shocked after seeing this. Meanwhile, the maid said the guy, allow me to hold the cloak, my lord. The guy giving his cloak to her said here. She asked, has her lady left any other instructions, my lord? He replied, not really. Then we saw flashback of the moment when the knight was having conversation with her. Coming back to the scene the redhead boy said, it can't be. How, could you of all people? After everything Lady Psyche has done for you. The guy holding his sword said, you talk too much. The maid said, I told you. I didn't need your company. The guy stabbed his sword in the boy. Changing scenes we saw Lady Psyche praying inside the temple. Meanwhile Lady Medea sneaked inside. She started to remove her cloak. Seeing her Lady Psyche said, Lady Medea. She replied, You don't look surprised to see me. Perhaps you already knew I'd come. Lady Medea gives a sad look and asks, What have you done with my knight? Lady Medea replied, why would you think that I saying this she started to fell? Lady Psyche holds her in her arms and said, Do you resent me? Because I took his highness from you? But you don't even love him. My lady, you only. Love his status and his throne. Lady Medea lying on ground replied, Then should I childishly swoon over the prince and play house like you are? When the entire empire could be under my thumb? Lady Psyche replied hearing this, Is that so wrong? Lady Medea pushing her said, move. You are ridiculous. To think that the future of this empire lies in your hands. I pity the people of Vesilius. Saying this she drowned in water and Lady Psyche suddenly moved to help. Lady Medea. Meanwhile Lady Medea drowned in water. She holding his throat said I can. Breathe. Is this some kind of a divine power? If it is. God, hear my prayers. If you really are the guardian deity of Vesilius. Lady Psyche puts her hand in water and tried to save Lady Medea. She holds her arms meanwhile Lady Medea countenance her words saying, Give me the chance to rule instead of this foolish wench. Give me everything she aches. Saying this she holds Lady Psyche's arm Lady Psyche pull her out. She tries to open her eyes and hear someone asking, My lady, open your eyes. When she opens her eyes she found her servants asking her, How are you feeling? The other one said, Are you all right? What? You want to know where you are? One of the servants said, Please, don't jest in such a way. My poor heart won't survive another scare. Lady Psyche replied, But who are you? And why do you speak as if you know me? Where are my servants? What happened at the temple? A lady servant wiping her tears with a cloth said, I just don't know why. Such terrible things keep happening to you, Lady Psyche. Lady Psyche replied, Who? And start moving forward. Meanwhile, lady servant said, You need more bed rest, my lady. You will faint again. Lady Psyche moved to the mirror and placed her hand on it. My goodness. Lady Psyche start shivering. 
She saw herself in the mirror and touch her face. She said, it's psyche. She said to herself, am I dreaming? No, this is. Meanwhile, a guy enters the room saying, please, your highness. Her lady has only just come to. Lady Psyche shocked and asked, your highness. The boy holds her hand and said, I'm revived to see that you are okay. He countenances his words placing her hands on his face. I was tormented by the thought that I might lose you. I was so frightened. H.E. placed his hands on her back and said, This very moment, I swear to you, that. Lady Medea Medea Solon, who dared to harm the future crown princess and ruined the day of prayer, will be sentenced to death. She hugs him and say nothing. She becomes happy and give a surprised look. This chapter ends here. Next chapter starts with a scene where Lady Medea, which is basically Lady Psyche who has switched with Lady Medea somehow, she said seeing herself in mirror. How strange. Why is Lady Medea in the mirror? She thoughts that she is dreaming and slap her face. She said O-E-C-H. While slapping her face. She touching herself in the mirror she said to herself. That hurts. So, this really isn't a dream? Then, she gave shocking look and said, Who is in my body now? She tries to stand. A lady servant gives a shocking reaction and said, Lady Medea, you're awake. Lady Psyche shocked hearing this. The servant started to stop Lady Psyche and one of them said, Where are you going? The other servant said, It's pouring outside. The doula wanted to see you as soon as you woke. She replied while being depressed, don't, call. Me Lady Medea. Home. I need to go to the Count's Manor. While changing scenes Lady Medea asks His Highness, you will, sentence Lady Medea to death? She continues her words, please don't say something so frightful. The servant seeing this becomes sad and said, she must have had her reasons. O.H. Lady Psyche. Lady Medea in her thoughts said, that was close. I almost immediately asked for her head. If it were Psyche, she wouldn't have wanted such a thing. His Highness sighed and said, I knew. You would say that. But he noticed a servant standing close to the door and said, What's with the commotion? She replied, Your Highness, it's... Lady Psyche outside shouts, Let me see her. She forcing the servant to let her enter said, I must speak with her. I beg of you, please. The servant replied, most certainly not. She is with His Highness right now. Hearing this lady Psyche becomes so happy and said, His Highness is here? Then all the more I must. Meanwhile the door opens and His Highness comes. He seeing Lady Psyche not recognizing her because of Lady Medea's body he thoughts that she is Lady Medea and grasp her neck. He said to her, I was told that you were too ill to be questioned. How dare you come here? His Highness furiously said, You should be grateful that I don't behead you right here and now. Seeing this Lady Medea shocked and said, How hilarious. How hilarious this is. She seeing the situation counting to her words. They had acted as if they were star-crossed lovers. But he doesn't even recognize her. His Highness said, From this moment on, Lady Medea Solon will not be permitted to set foot in the Count's manor. So be at ease and sleep soundly, my love. Meanwhile Lady Medea seeing her arms said, these fragile arms, her modest stature, and even a single breath from her lips is so flatteringly sweet. A servant enters inside and said, pardon me, Lady Psyche, Lady Medea shocks. The servant countenues and said, T have something to confess. In a trembling and guilt-ridden voice, she confessed that she had been spying for the Solon family. She said she had no choice in order to pay the medical bills for her ailing brother. The servant was completely unaware that she is Lady Medea and counting her words, and told me that it was Lady Medea that killed the knight and the servant. Lady Medea said to herself, she confessed everything. She must have thought the tables had turned because of what just happened. She hugs the servant and said, I'm sorry, I had no idea. How difficult it must have been for you. The servant sob and said, My lady. Lady Medea in her thoughts said, At first, I thought to cut her tongue out and feed it to the dogs, but I have decided to leave her fate in the hands of the divine. 
When morning comes, and I go back to being a Solon, I will kill her. If not, she lies. Lady Medea lying on her bed raised her hand in air, and said to herself she is lucky. She clenched her hand and said, Now, I am certain we must have swift places, because God has heard my prayer. Lady Psyche in her thoughts said, Is this the will of the empire's guardian deity? She sitting on her bed lots in her thoughts said, I have one year until the next day of prayer. However, it's not certain that we'll switch back. I didn't pray for this to begin with. Meanwhile a crow taps the window with its face. Lady Psyche squeezed her arms and said, Mother, Father, Your Highness, what am I to do if I have to live as Lady Solon for the rest of my life? She has many enemies, but she's stronger than all of her enemies combined. She started crying and said, And I am weak. I can't be strong like Lady Solon. I will be killed the moment I show weakness. She sitting on her bed said, Ah, why must I be so powerless? What can I do? To stay alive? A servant enters the room and said, My lady. She holding food for Lady Psyche said, I brought you your meal. You haven't eaten all day, so I brought soup, which is easy to digest. The servant trembled and said, Oh no, I've stuttered. And she's probably already in a bad mood. She thought she would be scolded. She in her thoughts said to herself, she's going to hit me. She suddenly realized that Lady Psyche has been silent. Lady Psyche said, thank you. How kind of you. Hearing this the servant shocks and said it. It was nothing. Being so happy hearing this she said, I was only doing my job. I'll make your bed too once you finish. Anything I can do I'll. Meanwhile we see the white haired guy with a crow. The crow comes and sit on his arm. He said once again, Lady Medea has not read my letter. In the past seven years. Have we ever been out of touch for so long? He said, but I'm sure she's fine. It's her of all people. Meanwhile a servant holding lots of book comes outside of his room singing something. He enters and said, My lord, today you must he stop talking and realize that Helio is going somewhere. He said to Helio, Lord Helio? Where are you going? Helio replied, I need to see Lady Medea. Even if she may scold me for visiting without notice. He said, And the thing I asked for yesterday? The servant replied, It's ready. Take it. The servant sighed and said, Oh well. It can't be helped, since a strange rumor about Lady Medea has been going around. His Highness is always very sensitive to Lady Medea's affairs. Meanwhile a servant of Lady Medea said, My goodness, it looks stunning. It's a present from the crown prince for you to wear to his birthday banquet. Servant helping Lady Medea wearing a golden necklace said, It's as radiant as your golden locks of hair. How beautiful you are. The servant said to Lady Medea, Look there, my lady. The flowers are in full bloom. Those trees were planted by Count Callista to wish you a speedy recovery. How magnificent it would be to take a walk among them with His Highness. His Highness walking with Lady Medea asks her, Isn't it too soon for you to be outdoors? She replied staying indoors for so long was suffocating. You worry too much, Your Highness. He replied, Psyche, some time has passed since our engagement. Call me by name instead of, Your Highness, won't you? After listening this Lady Medea remained silent at first, and then replied with a joy on her face, Yes, Eros. She lost in her thoughts and said to herself, Everything is going as planned. When we are officially wed following his birthday, and when the emperor passes away, I will become a member of the imperial family. I will become one of the two sons that leads the empire. She said, however, the Callista family is too overprotective. They won't even let me take a single step outside the manor gates. She placing her hand on her chin said, I need to get in touch with Heli. She said to Eros, Your Highness, I want to go to the market to celebrate my recovery. I also have business to tend to nearby. If you address me correctly, I'll think about it. Eros. Ha ha. In the very next scene they visited the market. The market was full of crowd. Lady Medea appears holding crow in a cage, she said, I've managed to get a bird for sending messages. 
Now I just need to wait for the crown prince. She suddenly glanced at a door behind which Eros was shouting. Stay outside while we discuss the affairs of the empire, he says. Lady Medea said to herself that, how cautious of him. So he's drawing a line since we're only engaged, is he? She slides a book and said, I wanted to listen in on it. She picks the book and opens it. She countenously flipped pages of the book. And the door opens making a noise squeak. Eros enters the room and said to Lady Medea, I kept you waiting. She replies it's fine. She said to him pointing towards the book, Time flew by since I was reading. Eros glare at the book and shocked he said this is. He shockily said H.A. Lady Medea seeing this becomes shocked and said to herself, He sneered at me? Eros picks that book and said, The history of the decline and fall of kingdoms predating the Vasilius Empire. This is a good book. He included, But isn't this too difficult for you? He said, If you wanted to see pretty pictures, I would have bought you a book of fairy tales. He holding that book in his hand said, Is this any way to treat your lover? She said seriously, no, I'm not imagining things. Eros gets shocked. There was a scornful look in his eyes. Lady Medea asks, he despises me. The chapter ends here. Next chapter starts with a scene where we can see Lady Psyche standing holding candles in her hands. She said, where am I? It's dark. She said to herself, it's so dark and I can't see very well. She suddenly heard a voice, someone was saying, Why did you lie to us? She got shocked. Some suspicious hands appears saying, You are not Lady Medea. But why are you pretending to be her? She suddenly becomes psyche again and said while crying, No. No. I then she saw His Highness Eros, who was holding a sword and said to her, I shall behead you this instant. Meanwhile the hands grab her from her arms. She saw the sword coming to herself and said, Please, please spare me. Meanwhile, she saw blood splashing all around. Then she suddenly woke up in her bed and that it was all a dream. The lady servant opens the windows and said to her, Did you sleep well? Lady Medea? Good morning. Meanwhile, changing scenes, we saw Lady Medea and Ero still talking about the book. Ero said, Psyche. While holding book in his hand he said to her, Why aren't you answering? Eros leaned down and gave a strange look to her. Lady Medea starts crying and said, I'm sorry, Eros. I didn't tell you because I thought you'd be worried. But... She start whispering something in Eros's ears. Eros gives a confused look and said, First, we should go somewhere else. And then we saw a royal vehicle going somewhere. She sitting in the vehicle said to Eros, to be honest, after my bouts of fainting, I feel as if I've lost parts of my memory. I thought reading might help bring them back. Eros holds her hand and said to her, weren't you disappointed that I didn't even notice? She replied to him, I was just heartbroken and sorry that I had lost the memories of the days we shared. Eros hearing this replied to her, what shall I do with you? They both hugs each other and Lady Medea in her mind said to her slef, We hold each other tightly as if worried. She said, But perhaps we are worried about different things. Then she said to Eros, Please tell me. About our precious memories. On the other hand, Lady Medea while having some tea said to herself, Did I have that nightmare because of my guilt? The servant interrupts her and said, My lady. She holding cookies in her hand said, I brought some scones. The servants who had been confused by the sudden change in their master's demeanor soon opened their hearts as if they had always been wanting to. Meanwhile Lady Psyche said, The Duke leaves the house often, and the Duchess is ill in bed. I think I could stay safe if I just carry on like this. She standing under a tree of oranges said, Lady Medea is not responding to my letter. She with a sad face said, But there is one person that I must avoid in order to survive. A lady standing with a horse rise her hand and shouts, Lady Medea, the Marquis is on his way here. Meanwhile lady servants standing with Lady Psyche get shocks. 
the servants becomes very happy hearing this and squeal. Then we saw a vehicle coming in town. Helio was sitting in that vehicle. Seeing Helio coming Lady Psyche becomes shocked and give a surprising look. Helio Nicolo, the young Marquis. When he was a mere child, he lost his parents in a carriage accident at the age of twelve. Then we saw baby Helio crying, even before he was done grieving. The greedy nobles quickly took to ruining the Nicolo family, seeing how vulnerable the young Marquis was. That was when he met Lady Medea. Then we saw Lady Medea holding Helio's hand in a night when sky was full of stars. Under her tutelage, he rapidly restored the Nicolo family name to its former glories. Upon entering adulthood, he made significant contributions to the War of the Empire, and the house of Nicolo flourished like never before. Lady Psyche said, so they've known each other for at least seven years. She said to herself, will I be able to trick him? A lady said, Marquis Helio is so intimidating. I wanted to avoid meeting him. Helio is was standing holding a glass of juice. Meanwhile Helio steps out from the vehicle. He saw Lady Psyche standing there and said to her, Lady Medea. He with a very happy face asked her, Have you been well? Lady Psyche said, It's been a while. Helio said to her, I've missed you. She said to herself in her mind that, I must keep a straight face. Suddenly, Helio stared at something, he said, despite my worries, it seems quite peaceful. But suddenly he said, no, it just makes things all the more suspicious. Meanwhile, Lady Medea's father said, Helio, I was wondering what all the excitement was about. So you were here. Helio replied, seeing Medea's father, your grace. Seeing this, Lady Psyche said to herself, at the bed of T.H. Western River last week. It's the Duke, Lady Medea's father. It's my first time seeing him up close. She said, but I'm glad that he's here now. The eyes of the Marquis just now were too probing. She giving a confused nervous expression said, I know it's impossible for him to figure out that we've switched bodies. But he made me nervous. If only they would leave. Lady Medea's father said, Right? Could I trouble you to spar with my daughter? It has been a while. Since she seems rather down lately. She hearing this becomes nervous. Lady Medea's dad starts walking on other direction. A lady servant said to him, I'll guide you to the sparring grounds. The other servant said, Cheer they're going to spar. Seeing this lady Psyche gets nervous and shouts, Hey! Hey, wait! She said, I'm not ready. Meanwhile, Helio grabs her hairs and said, Come to think of it. He holding her hairs said, Has my lady ever braided her hair like this? He with a happy face said, This is first. Meanwhile, hearing this lady Medea gets shocked. She being nervous grabs her neck and squeeze. Changing scenes we saw them in a training ground. Helio was holding a sword and Lady Psyche was standing in front of him. Meanwhile servants standing there said, It's been a while since we've seen them spar, hasn't it? The other servant standing next to her replied, Yes, it has. Helio holding a sword said, Please go easy on me. Lady Medea? Meanwhile she being nervous said to herself, The best swordsman in the empire is asking her to go easy on him? Just how strong is she? She said, compared to her, can I even lift this sword? This lump of steel. She picks the sword and rises it in air. She said to herself, I did it. And it feels light. My goodness. How is such a thing even possible? I must be just as strong as she is, since this is her body. She placed the sword on her shoulder and said, good. If that's the case, I might be able to keep this up for a short while. Meanwhile seeing this Helio gets confused. Meanwhile we see a flashback where Helio was practicing and Medea was helping him. She said, Heli, you are holding it wrong. She tells him, you must place one hand below the guard, and one hand on the pommel you'll support the weight of the sword. She with a smiling face said, that's it. 
Meanwhile coming back to present Lady Psyche tries to strike him while he was lost in his thoughts, but he grabs her sword in the way. Seeing this Lady Psyche gets shocked and also confused. Helio said to her noticing that she is holding the sword with one hand, it's strange, no matter how much I think about it. This sword is two-handed, yet you're holding it with one hand. There is no way Lady Medea would make such an elementary mistake. Helio founds that something was wrong and asks Lady Psyche, Who are you? Lady Psyche tremble and gets so nervous and said to herself, Oh no. Have I been found out? She said, I don't want to die. What would Lady Medea do? She said to herself that, The Lady Medea that I'd been whack think for so long would. She stops and shouts, Did you just address me as you? She in a serious voice tone said to Helio, Impudent brat. Lady Psyche holding sword in her hand in a serious tone said, Did you just address me as you, Impudent brat? Saying this Lady Psyche place her sword on his shoulder. Meanwhile Heli remains silent. Lady Psyche pretending to be Lady Medea said in a serious way, After all I've done for you. Meanwhile Heli remains silent while Lady Psyche places her sword on his shoulder. He thoughts in his mind, she's acting. She's not Lady Medea. But, if she isn't Lady Medea, who is she? Heli gets confused and said to him Slef, if I was just mistaken. Heli steps forward, and blood starts dripping from his throat. Lady Psyche gets shocked and said nothing. Heli holds her sword and makes a cut on his throat and said, punish me. I have isolant. He said I will pay with my blood. Lady Psyche throw her sword, she said enough. That's enough. A servant grabs her sword from ground, the lady servant said, I didn't expect them to draw blood during the spar. The other servant replied, they did use real swords but this has never happened before, has it? Whatever it was that happened, we will never know. We're too far away to hear what was said. Meanwhile Heli puts a bandage on his neck, he comes to Lady Psyche and said to her, I'm sorry to have made a scene. Lady Psyche replied, It's fine, you may go. Heli stops walking and said, But you'll still have to attend the Imperial Banquet in a week. Could I come to escort you then, my lady? Lady Psyche replied to him, O.H. His eyes are red. She said, He must be holding back his tears. She rise her hand in air. She touches her face and said, Of course, Helio. She giving a happy expression said, If not you, who else? Meanwhile we saw a royal vehicle going somewhere. She holds her hand, his hand tremble. She said to herself, I did it. I was left in scathe by Marquis Helio. I didn't realize I was capable of such a thing. She in a low tone said, And oh, that's not right. She said to herself, it was only possible because I was Lady Medea. Lady Medea said to herself standing in front of a fountain said this to herself. She said yes, but still. Meanwhile changing scenes we saw Helio's servant standing in rain said oh my. When did it start to rain? He was holding an umbrella in his hand he opens it and place above on a little bird. Meanwhile Helio comes to his house. His servant said, Oh, my lord. He giving umbrella to Helio ask, How was your visit to the duke's manor? He replied, Today, a funny thing happened. He with a happiness on his face said, Lady Medea called me Helio. She's never called me that since my coming of age ceremony. He said, Heli, was what she always called me. He clenched his hand and said, What? On the earth is going on? What is going on? Changing scenes we saw Lady Psyche's manner. A servant brushing Lady Medea's hair said, You're too excited to sleep, aren't you? Lady Medea said, His Highness' birthday is less than a week away. And it's the also the first public appearance we'll make since the engagement. My goodness! How romantic! The banquet will be full of influential families from both inside and outside the empire. There will be extravagant music and a smorgasbord. Her servant said, and my lady and his highness will be at the center of it all. What a picture of perfection. Nanny said to the servant, You look more excited than Lady Psyche. She replied to her, Do I? And starts loving. 
She going outside said, Have a good night, Lady Psyche. Lady Medea in a happy mood replied to her, Good night. After she leaves, Lady Medea becomes serious suddenly and said, Humoring them is exhausting. She holds the side grip of chair tightly, and she said, How bothersome. Should I drop the act? She said placing her hand on her forehead, Forget it. All of this will be over once I am married and become the crown princess. I am ready. She pointing towards her table said, A bird, lemons, and a sheet of paper. She picks the pen and start writing something on paper said, The juice from the lemon can be used as invisible ink to hide the writing in the letter. The message in the letter will be revealed if the paper is heated by flame. She squeezing the letter said, But most people won't go so far as to do that. She said, Heli will have realized that I'm not my usual self by now. She recalling the event where they switched bodies said, But there's no way he would guess that our bodies have switched. She said, This letter I wrote explaining everything is of utmost importance. She giving the letter to the bird said, Please take this to him. The bird flies. In the next scene we saw the crows dead on the table of his highness. He seeing the letter said, Is this a secret letter? He becomes confused and said, The name written here is Medea. His Highness starts reading the letter. I'm currently in Kud Callista's manor. He reads the letter and said, Well, so that's what happened. He folds the letter. A servant standing in front of His Highness said, During my watch, this bird flew out from Lady Psyche's room. This letter was originally meant for Marquis Helio of the house of Niccolo. His Highness replied, Well done. I will burn the letter. He said, We will head to the Marquis Manor first thing in the morning. And he burns the letter. In the next scene we saw Lady Medea saying, I wonder if, the Crown Prince. Saying this she gave a evil smile and said, Has seen the fake letter that I've sent. By now the real letter. Then we saw a cat walking through the jungle. There was something attached with its tail. In very next moment Helio picks the cat in his hands and said, What have you got there? He noticed the cat's tail and said, A piece of paper? No. It's letter. Lady Medea? Meanwhile Lady Medea was being ready for the event. The lady servant helping her said, How are these accessories, my lady? She replied, I love them. Shall I tie your hair a little lower? How strange that His Highness has decided to visit at such short notice. The door opens. Lady Medea gets confused. His Highness comes in and said, Psyche, I believe you have something to tell me. She replied to him, Last night, I dreamt of you, Eros, and it made me so happy. He listening to this gives a suspicious look and said, That's not what I meant. She replied to him, so when I heard that my dear Eros was coming to visit this morning, I just knew we were always meant to be. He picks the cup of tea and said you. He said to her, Love me so much that you see me in your dreams? She with a happiness on her face replied said, Of course. Listening this H he placed his hand on the table and said, In that case, I have a favor to ask. Stay away from me, dear Solon. I'm currently in Count Callista's manor, he said, don't you dare pretend not to know what this means. She hearing this becomes shocked and said, how, did you? She saying this starts crying sitting on chair, and said I had already noticed that I was being watched. It was impossible not to know. They tail me closely nearly every second that I'm awake, then disappear the very moment the crown prince visits. They must have been careless because Thier target is Psyche. Well, good for me. Thanks to Thier negligence, I could make all the necessary preparations. I can explain everything. Recently, I had received a letter from the Marquis. The letter mentioned that Lady Medea wanted for us to be friends again. As proof, the Marquis gave me a letter that she had sent him. Heli, I'm currently in Count Callista's manor. I have decided to forgive her at last. But because we could not talk for very long. Due to your sudden visit, she asked if we could arrange a meeting at your birthday banquet. 
she said, I sent the letter back to her in order to decline. Because it would only worry you, your highness. I was going to tell you, but... She with a fake smile said, you knew all along. That's why you are here. How foolish I must have looked to be excited like that. Hearing this Eros gives a confused look and remains silent. And walks. Foolish? The thought never crossed my mind. I was just worried about you. She replies Eros. Eros asked a servant you. He replied to Eros, yes, sir. Eros said to him, bring me the bracelet that I've prepared for her to wear at the banquet. Eros asked Lady Medea to bring her hand forward saying, your hand. Lady Medea hesitate and gives her hand to him. Eros holding Lady Medea's hand brings a bracelet near her hand and said, a bracelet this size should be large enough to hide a bruise. Lady Medea asked, what? Meanwhile his highness locks her up. Eros said I am certain that that woman is up to something. She may even try to poison you again. He asked the servants to lock her up in basement. Lock Lady Psyche in the basement. So that she may not contact Lady Medea. Hearing this Lady Medea gets shocked hearing this. She shouts, your highness. Eros placed his hand on her face and said to her, I will release you before the banquet. He said to her it's because I love you. She shouts, liar. Why would you lock up someone you love? This is absurd. He said, I only said that Lady Medea wanted to make up with Psyche again, in case she acts crazy and flings herself at me at the banquet. She shouts, why isn't anyone stopping him? Meanwhile the servants become sad and Nanny starts crying. She whipping her tears said, why? She said, Lady Medea, why did you have to disappoint his highness? Lady Medea with a confused look said, H.A. Not the single person in this manner is sane. Meanwhile Ero sitting in his room said, Do you think I was a bit excessive? It was the only way. Eros in a low voice tone said, Medea, she is wicked like no other, cunning, and manipulative. He said, I cannot help but be cautious. Medea. Meanwhile Lady Medea in the basement noticed something and said, Why is there a place like this in the basement? Is more than capable of catching on. The doors open she becomes shocked and said, to what is going on from a single letter or even a simple sentence. She gets completely shocked. Lady Psyche hears a voice and thinks that's wind but in reality someone was trying to climb tree. She said, is it the wind? The window opens and Helio appears. And he glare at her and said to himself, rapping twice on the rightmost window closest to the bed, is the signal we agreed on, when we are meeting in secret. But now, Lady Medea, no, this stranger, acts as if she doesn't know the secret knock at all. Lady Psyche scares and said, how? How dare you meanwhile Helio interrupts her and said first, why don't you introduce yourself properly? Psyche Callista. Lady Psyche scared and said, How did he know? How? Meanwhile Helio said to her, You're too slow. You should have drawn your sword by now. Lady Psyche hearing this said, Pardon? Helio replied, Your life would have been in danger if it were anyone else. He said, You do realize that many nobles who are well acquainted with Lady Medea will be present at the banquet. He said, Your mannerisms, your speech, Every single step you take. I'll make you the perfect Lady Medea. Lady Psyche said to him, But why? Don't you despise me, Lord Helio? Helio said nothing and remained silent for first. Then he paused and said, I was ordered to protect you by Lady Medea. Meanwhile on the other side Lady Medea shouts, Ha! Five days left until the birthday banquet. The all-powerful force sustaining the Vasilius Empire is Divinity. 
Only two families were bestowed divine power, and they took the name of the empire as their own. One was the imperial family, which made sure that the empire prospered outside its borders, and the other was the pope and the church, which focused on the empire's security. These two families shaped the Vasilius Empire. The debutante ball held after two springs and two winters. Had passed in the Vasilius Empire, was the most anticipated event by all the budding socialites. Three years ago, two men standing in a party said, I heard, that Count Callista's daughter will make her debut today. The other man replied, that's quite unexpected. I thought she would stay hidden forever. I think it was said that she's been chronically ill from birth. No. The rumor is that she was born a monster, not a human. One of them said some say that the Count kept his daughter hidden because she is too precious to him. What nonsense! Ha! Suddenly a man noticed something and said, A.H. The Medea appears and he said, Lady Medea, what is your take on it? Our status was very different back then. You were crushed by the gossip even upon your first step into high society, while I was already in the uppermost echelons at the mere age of nineteen. Therefore that night, Lady Medea said, Well, I showed a little generosity as someone in my position would. It is normal for a household to hide their troubles, but the same is true for those who possess something very precious. A man said indeed. However, precious things, how astute you are. Lady Medea, you are much too kind. The man gets nervous and said is that. I mean, is she really Lady Psyche of the house Callista? Meanwhile Lady Psyche comes holding her dress. That was why Psyche's entrance was so shocking. Meanwhile coming back to present we saw Helio and Lady Psyche with lots of books. Hyo said to her, straighten your back some more. He said to her, don't fall asleep. You need to transcribe at least half of what I've prepared to even begin imitating Lady Medea. Lady Psyche hearing this replied, But this is too difficult for me, my lord. Are you sure Lady Medea had mastered these works when she was only eight years old? Helio said to her, Please don't use that tone and expression with Lady Medea's face. He said, I suppose I should be relieved that Lady Medea took a more generous tone in public. He said to her, Still, you should make a habit of speaking down to people when in private. She hearing this replied to him, fine. Meanwhile Helio in his thoughts said, will she be able to pull it off? Culture, common sense, and savoir-faire. She doesn't have a single thing that I can rely on. But at least, she has the potential to weather a crisis. Helio in his thoughts said, I have no choice but to risk everything on that potential. Meanwhile Lady Medea locked in basement sighed, Well, it looks as if he won't let me out. On the other hand we see His Highness Eros standing in front of windows, his servant said, Your Highness. Bowing his head he said, There are no suspicious movements coming from the Solans. Eros standing there replied, I ask that so? Be that as it may, two are definitely better than one. Meanwhile Helio seeing Lady Psyche's dress said to her, What? Are you wearing? He said, Why is your dress so flashy? She replied, Hm? Does it look strange on me? Helio said, No, but you're dressed as if you're the star of the banquet. He said, You're not the crown prince's lover right now. Attracting attention like that only puts your life in further danger. Lady Psyche replied to him, I know. But I've been waiting for this day for so long. His Highness was too busy last year. So he promised we would spend his birthday together this year. Meanwhile in Count's Callista manner we saw Eros kissing Lady Medea's hand and said, Just as I promised. After everything we've been through, we stand together here at last. Lady Medea in her thoughts said, On the way down to Count Callista's basement, I was curious to see what secrets the well-mannered house of Callista had been hiding. I guessed that it would be a prayer room from the atmosphere but I wouldn't have been surprised if it turned out to be a prison. In the end, it turned out to be just a normal room. A normal room that had been lived in for some time. Lady Medea slides her hand on a table and said Psyche must have been confined in this room until the day of her debutante ball, 
when she was sixteen. She watching her hands said, but why? Eros. How? Did you even know that this room existed? Meanwhile the musical instrument starts making sound and someone introducing them said, Glory to the Vasilius Empire. I present to you the wings of the empire, His Highness Eros Orna Vasilius, and only daughter of the house of Callista, Lady Psyche. The crowd starts shouting, Hurrah! Meanwhile Lady Medea saw Lady Psyche and said, Psyche, there you are. The tables have turned since your engagement day. Today, I'm the one looking down at you. On that day, I wanted to rip that smile off your face by wringing your neck. She giving a evil look said, I wonder. How you see me today? The usurper of the one you love? Or the fool who now has to bear your misfortune? If you like the video please subscribe and like. I will make next part if I got 10 comments for part 2. Thanks for watching.